Bear with me, y'all. As I get myself together. Ooh. This lighting is everything, though. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Shannon Camille. I'm the owner of Shannon Camille Arts. Today I'm gonna walk you all through my top five must have items for my vendor booth. Being a vendor at events like craft shows, flea markets and other events are a great way to get your name out there and showcase your art, but they can be very stressful um, and they can be a lot of work. And it's, it can be even difficult to figure out how to display your work in a way that is eye-catching, but also functional. Um, so here are my top five things in my vendor booth that just make sense, that just work for me. Number one, grid wall. Grid wall is typically used in the retail space um, for hanging like garments and other merchandise. Now I use it at my vendor booth to hang my art prints. You can typically find retail grade grid wall at retail suppliers like Uline um, or Displays to Go, but I find that they can be really, really expensive. So instead, I use wire cubes from Amazon. These wire cubes are typically used for storage. Um, you may have seen them before paired with like those little fabric drawers um, or left open to be used as like shelving but I find that they work perfectly for my grid wall. In fact, I think they work better than most retail grade grid wall. For one, they are super modular. So when you're vending, you need to be able to configure your setup to fit your space easily. At each event, you may be in a different spot um, with a different size space or have just different surroundings. So it's really important to be able to change your setup um, on the fly and configure it however you need. So these cubes come with individual like wire squares and they're connected with these little plastic joints. These joints allow you to shape your setup pretty much however you want. And in addition to using them to hang prints, sometimes I use them uh, to create like little stack out shelves for teas. Sometimes I hang keychains on them. Uh, I really love the flexibility that I can get with these. You can find a lot of accessories online, things like hooks that allow you to like hang different items. You can use zip ties. So they, they really allow you to customize their use and uh, how they will be used in your space. I wanted to add a quick clip of me building my wire cube grid wall. So the one I'm building here will be used to display my t-shirts. And as you can see, you have to build it piece by piece so it can take a while. It takes me about 10 to 15 minutes to set up and then I have another one on the other side for prints. And I always have my sister do the other one so we're able to get it done fast. But if I was alone, it would probably take that full like 20, 30 minutes or so. You'll see that this one is configured exactly how I configure the one for prints, except the T's sit in these individual sections and the prints will sit in crates like so. And the best thing about them to me is that they're pretty affordable. So I have one six cube set and two four cube sets. So the six cube set was about $35 or so when I bought it back in April, but inflation. Uh, so now they're about $45. And then the four cube set was about $32 in April when I bought it, but now it's 42. So all in all, about $100, whereas one retail grade grid wall um, that's maybe say two by six feet uh, will run you about $80 to $100 just for just for one piece of grid wall. Um, so, and they're usually really hard to to hang um, or like set on top of a table. So I find that my grid wall solution makes it really, really easy for me to um, make them tabletop. I can um, have them stacked from the floor or whatever I need them to do, however I need to configure them. 
it's really easy for me to do so with these wire cubes from Amazon. So I highly recommend them. A lot of other artists that I uh, have talked to uh, at events um, have told me that they're going to start using them for their setup. Uh, I even had someone tell me that they plan to like hang other things like skateboards and, and you know, any kind of merchandise really you can hang on these uh, wire cubes. So I highly recommend them over retail grade grid wall and you'll save a lot of money. So next up we have crates. I store my prints in these little wooden crates from Ikea and it allows people to kind of flip through and find the piece that they're looking for. Uh, I love it because it kind of gives that record store vibe like like you know crate digging when you're looking for your favorite record. Um, I also just love the look of them. I am a sucker for some unfinished wood for some reason uh, especially like a nice light colored unfinished unstained pine. Um, so I really, really like how these uh, crates look aesthetically. But just like all Ikea things, you have to put them together. It's pretty easy, but I recommend uh, using a drill or an electric screwdriver just to make it easier for you to put them together. One thing I don't like about them is they fall apart really easily. There are some sides that come already nailed together. Um, and after transporting them, they are always falling apart, which is super annoying. So I recommend maybe putting some wood glue on the sides. Nothing a little wood glue won't fix just to keep those pieces from falling apart. These are about $9 each. Uh, that's the current price. I actually don't recall paying that much for them when I bought them earlier this year. I have about five of them and I, and I really don't recall paying $9. Uh, I could be wrong, but here we are, good old inflation. Uh, I, I suspect that the price changed on these. Next up, we have uh, wagons or a dolly. Uh, so most events actually do not provide any dollies or anything to help you like unload all of your merch and all of your supplies. Um, so friend, listen to me. Having a wagon or a dolly is a absolute must have. Let me tell you. I have two of these multi-purpose wagons that I purchased from Walmart for about $48 each. Um, they're foldable, which is great. So I can easily fit them like into the back of my truck. They're super lightweight. Um, these wagons truly saved my life. So before I got these, um, me and my sister were actually like physically carrying all of my stuff from my car to my space. Um, it, the stuff is just so heavy in your arms. It was just an absolute nightmare having to like go back and forth with this stuff. So if you have a lot of merch like me, I have prints, I have tees and, and accessories, just a lot of like stuff. I have tables. Um, so if you have a lot of merch like me, it's just really infeasible to carry things back and forth from the car to the space. Um, so get these wagons or, or dolly. It either works. Anything that'll help you get your merch from, um, your space to your area at the event um, in case the event does not provide them. Um, I find that most events don't. Um, some events that I've I've been to do, like I do um, Melrose Trading Post often here in LA, and they actually do provide um, like whack, like dollies and carts and stuff like that for you to be able to move your stuff from um, your space uh, car to your space. But every other event that I've ever done, they don't really assist with that. Usually the parking lot is far um, from your space. So having something that allows you to carry your things is going to be absolutely pivotal. I would say, um, depending on the amount of merchandise that you have, I would say don't even don't even do an event until you have some way to um, transport your stuff to and fro. Something with wheels, something that'll make it easier. Next up on my list is tablecloth. So I guess this kind of goes without saying, uh, but these are absolute musts. These tablecloths allow me to hide all of my crap um, under the tables and it prevents me from having to take all of my like extra back stock and stuff back to my car after setting up. So things like my totes, my extra merch, even, even my wagons that I just mentioned, I just fold them up and I put them right under the tables and they're hidden behind the tablecloths. That way, if I need anything, I have access to it really easily. Plus, when it's time to go, I can just pack all my stuff right in the wagons. I don't have to go back to my car. Um, I have three tablecloths from Amazon, uh, and they were about $15 each. 
So what I don't like about these tablecloths is that they get really wrinkled, which is obviously uh, very unsightly. Uh, if you don't prefer these um, types of tablecloths, they do have a lot of like fitted it's like spandex like tablecloths on Amazon. The only reason why I haven't switched to those kinds of tablecloths is that they don't touch the floor, which I which I don't like. Like I said, I do hide a lot of stuff under my tables and the spandex ones usually have like this like crescent shape at the bottom. They don't go all the way down to the floor. Um, so I don't want any of my back stock exposed. So that's why I just have these tablecloths. Um, if you know of a tablecloth out out there that is fitted um, but goes all the way down to the floor so I can hide all my stuff like really tight to the table um, tablecloths please let your girl know I absolutely hate the wrinkles in these tablecloths it really bothers me but they're the best solution I have at the moment so let me know if you if you have any recommendations in addition to the tablecloths, I also have custom table runners from Vistaprint. Um, so this is very much an aesthetic choice. Uh, these are absolutely not like a necessity, but I love the way that these bring my booth together. And to be honest, they are, they were kind of expensive. They cost me about like 250 altogether. And that's after a coupon. So that's after a promotion. Um, so I got these table runners um, from Vistaprint and it is truly worth paying the additional cost. I'm telling you, I've done the legwork. I've gone to some other vendors and I have absolutely hated the way the tablecloths come out. So um, take my advice, just spend the extra money when, you, when you're ready to purchase these. I'd highly recommend Vistaprint. This is obviously not a sponsored video. I'm not sponsored by Vistaprint, um, but I just found the experience of ordering these was, was great. Their design platform was super, super easy to use for me. Um, the design came out exactly like the mock-up that I made online. And it was, I was just overall really, uh, really pleased with my experience with Vistaprint. I designed these tablecloths myself to match my signature pattern that you see on my website um, and my business cards. Um, but they have tons of templates. Like if you don't want to design your own uh, table runner, uh, you, you definitely do not have to. They have a lot of other templates that you can use on their website. It's really, really easy and they come out beautiful. Um, I just, like I said, I love how these tablecloths tie my booth together. Um, this was my absolute last purchase for my booth, actually. Uh, because they were so expensive, I held off. And I want you all to know, like the things that I'm mentioning in this video, you do not have to go out and buy all of this stuff at once. Not all of these things are absolutely essential to getting started. Um, these are just my favorite items. Like, I bought all these items in a staggered way. Um, I did not go out and like buy all of this stuff at once. So um, think about, you know, what's a necessity to get started and everything else can absolutely come later. Next up, number five, is a power source so when you're at a booth all day you're definitely going to need some kind of power source so most events actually do not provide electricity uh, so having a power source is a must to keep you know all of your devices up and running all day um, so I have this portable power station that I got from Amazon. It was about $175. I know it's pretty pricey, but it is a, it is really an absolute must. I use this power source to keep my phone charged, um, my iPad. Um, at some events I use like rechargeable lights. Um, and I also have a battery powered fan um, for when I do like outdoor events or, or even indoor events. So um, this power bank just keeps my stuff charged all day seriously i have yet to run out of power with this thing even after using it all day like usually i'll get home and it's really only at like 70 percent after using it all day long to charge all my devices so seriously seriously get it it is amazing it is an absolute must have um, if you do a lot of events, you don't have a power source. Uh, it, it really has, it really has saved my life. Like, I'm not saying you can't get through an event without having electricity. Like you can, I've done it before. I've forgotten my power bank at home. Uh, I had to use my cell phone a little bit less, keep the brightness down on my iPad, but I just don't like to be without it because if my iPad dies, it's just harder for me to, um, 
ring out customers or sorry check out customers and and things of that nature so i just highly recommend that you uh get this power bank to just get you through the day for all of your electric things honorable mentions so uh number six honorable mention would be an attractive checkout so um it was really important to me personally to have a uh, attractive uh, checkout experience for my customers um so uh, my payment experience is com um, comprised mostly of my iPad, um, my square reader, and my iPad stand. This iPad stand was about $36. It's universal, so I think um, it probably fits, honestly, most iPads or uh, tablets. Uh, I love that you can adjust the height on this iPad stand. It's super easy for me to like flip the screen over for customers to like put in their like email or phone number to get their receipts. I also really like how simple the design is. Uh, I want my checkout experience to be as easy as possible. So this iPad stand really does do the trick. I do want to upgrade um, soon to having like a custom kiosk or something from Etsy, like one where I can set my square reader in it um, and I can have my business cards in it and like have a little sign that has like all the ways that you can pay and my, my social media information. So I plan to um, get that soon. But for right now, this iPad stand is cutting it. It really is simple and easy and just attractive looking when it comes to the checkout experience. And my last honorable mention um, is decorative elements. I'm an advocate of just having an aesthetically pleasing booth overall. I really think that if you put effort into the way that your booth looks, the way your display looks, um, it'll just, it'll attract customers, it'll attract people. To be honest with you, um, people when they come to events to shop there are so many other things for them to look at um there are so many other booths and i'm not saying that you have to go over the top like being minimal is great um if you want a minimum boot minimal booth that's absolutely amazing um but it's just all about how you display your work against everyone else that's at the event so you just want to make sure that um, your booth is aesthetically pleasing. Your setup is aesthetic aesthetically pleasing and you have some sort of like point of interest to draw you out from the crowd of other vendors. So, um, decorative elements, um, like plants or flowers or what, whatever you like in your display, it doesn't have to be a lot. It doesn't have to be expensive. Um, most of my decor actually comes from bullseye's corner in target. Um, so really, really cheap stuff. The little, the little $5 section at target. Um, they got really cute things in that section, like vases, um, faux plants that you can use. I have found my trays for my stickers and like my business cards there, um, little containers, Th things like that. Um, you really don't have to spend a lot of money on this kind of thing. Just just pick up some things here and there that, that catch your eye. Um, maybe some things at the dollar store or even stuff that you have at the house. Like some of my things at my booth are things that I, that I already have. So um, be creative, look around the house, go to dollar stores. You don't have to go all out and spend a lot of money on decorative items. Like they're not the main reason why people are at your booth anyway. So, um, you know, don't don't go crazy. And once again, these are not like required or you know they're not a necessity now i know this seems like a lot but really like i said earlier i accumulated most of these things over time uh you don't have to go all out and buy all of this stuff at one time so that's important to know you know keep it simple keep it cheap in the beginning and as you go you can you know add on more things it honestly took me like seven months to get you know, everything that I have for my vendor booth. And there are still things now that I want to add and even some things that I've, I've learned along the way that I want to like take away and, and simplify my booth even more. So give yourself some grace um, and take your time getting the things that you need. I plan on doing more videos about my business um, i'm really interested in like talking about the the business side of things i think in my next video i'll cover some things just some top top five things to know 
before vending at the event or even things I wish I had have known before I became a vendor. Also plan on doing more videos around creating my art, like draw with me's, time lapse videos. Uh, I still consider myself a beginner artist. Um, I haven't really gone to school for artwork, so I don't have like a, a college education. I do, I do have, I have taken some art classes in, in college, but um, I am not formally trained. So pretty much everything that that I do, I was most, mostly self-taught. And then I even stopped doing artwork for a really, really long time. So honestly, I started back up in 2020 and I'm still learning a lot. So uh, I want to take this journey together. I want you to see my struggles. I want you to struggle with me. So I hope you like this video. And of course, um, here comes the obligatory like, subscribe, share with a friend. But thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye.